Hi there everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today I'm going to be attempting to cold weld inside of a vacuum chamber. And the first item that I'll try to weld together are these gold plates that Ave sent me. You see these are two one gram gold bars that he has polished up to a very fine finish. If you look over here on the other side, you see they're very smooth and shiny. Now the idea is that if there's no oxide layer and you bring two metals together, they should spontaneously weld. Of course we're not seeing that here. Even though gold is pretty much the ideal material for this because it doesn't oxidize. And because of that you can actually get gold to cold weld. Uh, if you've ever tried to like fold a piece of gold leaf in half and then unfold it, you just can't do it because it welds to itself. And also Ave was able to actually get these to cold weld together when he pushed them together and rotated them. So why don't they cold weld when I just touch them like this? Well, I think what it is, it's never going to rust away. Gold is very inert, but it does still stick to oxygen. Oxygen is a very reactive molecule and it loves to bond with everything. Gold just forms a single atom thick layer of oxygen on its surface and nothing more. So if I put the gold in an atmosphere that contains no oxygen and basically nothing else, then I should have a better chance of it welding. But then I've still got the problem with the uh, oxygen stuck to the surface, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a rig to like put this uh, lens cleaning cloth between them and then yank it out when it's under vacuum, dropping them together, and hopefully we'll see them weld. So here's what I've come up with. You see I've got a wood frame here and a weight. And this weight is tied to a string which is tied to the uh, polishing cloth which is between the two gold plates and to hold the plates together I've got a magnet there and the uh, metal nut is just attracted to the magnet. And when this uh, cloth pulls out those two should slam together. A metal bar here to keep the nut from being pulled along with the cloth and over here attached to the weight you can see there's a string that I can cut with my laser. Non-electrical pressure gauge back there so we can see when it's under vacuum. Let's try it out. So I've now removed most of the air. And that pulled free. The gold pieces are in contact. Okay, time to see if the gold's actually welded or not. Let's just pull the whole thing out so we can have a look at it. Okay. Time to see if this is welded. Judging by how it moved there, I'd say it's not. So I'm trying again, but this time I've set up Ave's nut rattler rig here to vibrate a stainless steel bolt and nut at the same time. Also, I've got a bowl of desiccant back there and I'm going to be putting some liquid nitrogen right here up front. The nitrogen, of course, will evaporate and boil off under the vacuum, but it'll also displace the oxygen while it does it, so there'll be even less oxygen in here than before. And uh, this thing's actually pretty neat. It will, I turn it on, it vibrates, and it'll turn off, let everything settle, and it'll start vibrating again, just like that. Now, this battery here, initially I was afraid that the electrolyte might uh, boil under vacuum and leak out and, you know, the battery will cease to function, but I've determined that it is sealed well enough and it will do just fine in the vacuum environment. Let's put the liquid nitrogen in. Let's throw that in there. So this thing has been running flawlessly for the last uh, couple hours. See it just turned off again to let it settle. It doesn't look like the nut's welded, but we'll get it out of there and have a look at it in a little while. But first, I want to cut this string, drop the weight, and then let it sit for maybe another half an hour. See, perhaps the cold welding requires a bit more time. Maybe I took maybe it out if too I fast let it uh, sit with the metals close together for a long time. The, atoms will like diffuse together and form a stronger bond. Okay. Oh, did it not pull it all the way out? It didn't. Ah, 
got it. Just kind of rocked the chamber around a little bit. And I got it unstuck. So now the gold's together. Let's let it sit there and see if the metals will weld. Little thing still running. Turn it off. Yeah, it didn't weld it. And let's have a look in here. Well, it might be welded in. Let's uh, pull this all out and have a look. Let's pull this off. And yeah, it didn't weld. This thing worked flawlessly, but when I take this bolt out, I don't really see any evidence of cold welding. It definitely wore down on it, so it definitely got through any oxide layer that could have been there. It just didn't weld. That's an interesting result. I mean, this vacuum chamber is far from being a perfect vacuum, but we should have saw some result. But I'm going to keep trying till I get something. I repeated all of these experiments, but using indium instead of gold. And I still got no result. So right now I'm thinking maybe I ought to try bringing the metals together a little bit harder and faster. So I've set up a mouse trap here. And I've affixed the two pieces of gold to it. So that it'll act like a hammer. This can come down and smack into this other gold piece. Now, of course the gold's still going to have the oxide coating, but I have one way that I can remove that. To see really bright light, especially in the near ultraviolet, should provide enough energy to knock off those oxygen atoms. Also the heat will cause the oxide to decompose. Just hopefully I don't get it too hot to uh, melt the glue, that would be bad. Uh, that uh, flew all over the place. Uh, well, the gold pieces are not stuck together. So I didn't see any evidence of cold welding on these pieces of gold. Perhaps I wasn't able to remove the oxide layer. Perhaps uh, cold welding is a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. But uh, my next test is going to be right here. Inside this test tube I've got a little bit of microscopically fine gold powder. And as you can see I've put this uh, vibrator onto the test tube, so hopefully it'll shake it around. I'm going to test this under vacuum and see if these uh, tiny microscopic gold particles are able to weld together. Perhaps I'll produce a large gold nugget this way. I also set it up so that I can put these pieces of gold up on here so they can vibrate against each other. Yeah, perhaps they'll eventually weld together this way. So, let's uh, turn on the vacuum once again. Turn this thing on. Let's see if it works. It's going to be rather hard to tell whether or not these gold particles actually weld together. So you know what? I'm going to take a little piece of gold off of this gold bar here. And I'm going to drop this in the test tube. And uh, I'll look at that to see if any gold particles stick to it. I hope that doesn't ruin the electronics. <laughs> Got some frozen nitrogen sitting on top of it. Seems to be operating, sublimating quickly. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be a problem. So this has been going for roughly half an hour. And a couple of changes that I've noticed is that, first of all, there's like less volume in there. Uh, the color has changed a little bit and I'm seeing like little flashes of gold like shiny more often so that's interesting I think what's happening here is it is actually the particles are fusing together into larger and larger particles okay let's turn that buzzer off So these two gold plates 
Yeah, they haven't welded together or anything. I'm going to take this powder that's in there. I'm going to put it on this microscope slide. Here's what the gold powder started out looking. And here is what it looks like after the vacuum chamber vibration treatment. As you can see, the gold is much more shiny and has clumped together into nuggets. So if we go look at the large gold flake that I put in there, you can see that on some places that might actually have some more gold stuck to it. So I think this is actually cold welded. The problem is, is that I'm pretty sure gold would have done this in an atmosphere. So let's try a different, more reactive metal. And let's also uh, fire up the Sprengel pump and try it in a higher vacuum environment. So I've got the Sprengel pump working again. And with this thing, I can pump the atmosphere down to roughly one millionth of atmospheric pressure, which is roughly a hundred times less atmosphere than the other vacuum pump can do. So let's try this out. I've got some copper powder inside the vacuum, and I've also over here got some copper powder exposed to the air. I'm going to vibrate them for a little while, possibly several hours, and we're going to see if the one in the vacuum welds before this does. So I started this thing running at about 2 o'clock and as you can see it's 7.44 now so it's been running for most of the day but the results are pretty encouraging. You see when you look in here the two samples are very different colors. This is the atmosphere one and this is in the vacuum and it looks like the vacuum one has got the copper in chunks as if it's welded together. So I say let's break this tube off and go put this under a microscope and see just what it's done. So here are the three copper powders. This is the stuff that is unchanged. This is the stuff that vibrated in atmosphere and this is the stuff that was vibrated in vacuum. Uh, these pieces of copper there were just like a, a rattling ball to help agitate the mixture. You know, same thing I did with the gold. So here's the original copper powder. This is electrolytic copper and it is rather oxidized as you can see. It's kind of a dark red color from the copper oxide that's on a surface. Okay, let's go over to the copper that got shaken around inside the atmosphere. It looks pretty much the same besides the fact that the pieces are just ground up finer. You know, maybe some of them have been polished. There's still quite a lot of oxides here. So coming over to the stuff that was in the vacuum, you can see there's a definite difference here. They're much more shiny and the pieces are like, well that's, that's a pretty large chunk of copper right there. Let's uh, continue moving over. So you can see this almost looks like copper nuggets. Look at that. The shinier, big old clumps of copper. So this is the little piece of copper wire that I put in there as like a rattler ball. And look at it. It's got little bits of copper all stuck to it. It's like actually bigger than it was when I put it in. If you look at the edges of it, you can see there's bits of copper stuck. That's awesome. So here's the piece of copper that was in the atmospheric chamber. And as you can see, it, it looks, you know, it's shinier than it was when I put it in, but otherwise it's completely unchanged. You can still see the scratches left by the cutters. Like there's nothing stuck to it. Here are the two pieces of metal side by side. And the difference here is just striking. This uh, one on the right that wasn't exposed to the vacuum chamber is still smooth and shiny as the minute I cut it. But this one over here on the left has got all kinds of bits of copper crud stuck to it so you don't even see the original surface anymore. So that's not quite the spectacular welding result that I was looking for, but it is a result. I did get metals to weld together inside of a vacuum chamber, and I was able to weld metals together that were not super unreactive. Copper. 
So what appears to have been going on is that the copper, uh, normally, if you scrubbed off the oxide layer, it would reform almost immediately. But in the vacuum chambers, that didn't happen, and so it had time to then go and hit another particle and fuse with it, which is kind of cool. Still, my work on this video has raised more questions than it has answers. Like, back to indium, for example, why is it that I can put the indium block on top of the other, rotate it under its own weight, and get it to weld? And yet, I can take them and smack them together as hard as I like, and they'll never fuse. It's so weird. And like, even in a vacuum chamber, that didn't work. So, at this point, I'm thinking that maybe, like, uh, in order to get them to actually weld, you have to deform the crystal structure of the metal. Say this is one metal crystal and this is another. If they come in like this, they're not going to fuse. But if you squish them together, then they'll fuse. Which explains why the bolt didn't weld to the nut. There just simply wasn't enough force on it. If I was to put torque on it and put a lot of pressure behind it, then it would absolutely weld, which has been shown even in Earth's atmosphere, so there you go. That's just what I'm thinking at this point, but could be wrong. Probably almost certainly am. But the welding of these blocks does have some similarities to how gauge blocks stick together. I don't think these are welding, but it does look like a similar process is going on, at least maybe initially. So I do want to revisit this project at some point, but maybe I'll do a few other videos first. So a couple of things that I know you guys are going to mention. Uh, first of all is the mercury vapor in the Sprengel pump, because the, the atmosphere that's left in the tube after it evacuates the air is essentially completely mercury vapor, but of course about a millionth of normal atmospheric pressure, so there's, there's not a lot of mercury there. But copper, especially a copper powder, will absorb mercury. Um, maybe and it's possible that the mercury getting onto the copper like aided in the sticking of the metals. But still, a mercury-copper alloy, especially if the mercury content is very low, is still solid. It's still a metal, so I'm still counting it. But I'd love to test this without the mercury vapor. And uh, second is that when I burn the string with the laser, I'm, I'm not really burning the string. The, the laser does get plenty hot to burn the string, but by the time the string gets hot enough to melt, it breaks, because there's, there's force on it. So I, I didn't think that'd be a major contaminant for the chamber, considering the chamber's you know, six gallons and the string is very tiny. If you guys haven't already, I definitely recommend going and checking out Dave's channel. He's super smart and also hilarious. Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. We are firing on all cylinders today. While this thing chooches, we're gonna go in the room formerly known as the wife sewing, and we're gonna mess around with cold welding. Gold. Him and I get along pretty well. We may do more collab type videos in the future. I'll put a link down in the description for his uh, channel so you guys can go check him out. So, hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.